Happy WrestleMania week, everybody. It's your boy, AJ Tripp. And I got a top 10 list for you. We are redoing my original list of the top 10 WrestleMania matches of all time. Because I think when I, I first did that, you know, for pretty much nothing has changed. Nothing has changed over that time to add to that list. But as I went back and I looked over that list, I thought there were some things in the wrong spot. You know, I thought that maybe there was some some different um, ways to go about it. And I, and, and, and when, I, when I really looked at it, there were matches that, that, that I had, like that was high, that was not above there. It, you know, so it's it was definitely something that I was thinking about that, you know, something I need to redo. I think this is the perfect time. WrestleMania is a couple of days away. You don't want to make sure you want to be here because Friday I've got um Friday I've got my NXT stand and deliver and WrestleMania Saturday and Sunday predictions. And then of course Sunday and Saturday stand and deliver. After the Sunday Deliver, the Rebel Reaction. After WrestleMania Saturday, a Rapid Reaction. And after WrestleMania Sunday, a Rapid Reaction. And maybe, just even maybe, I might do a rea reaction to the, uh, a quick Rapid Reaction to the Raw After Mania. We'll have to wait and see what goes down on WrestleMania Saturday and Sunday, because then maybe something will happen. Or maybe I'll just do a live stream. Maybe I just might just do a live stream. Who knows? We'll see what all that happens, but um, but right now for today we are doing the top ten WrestleMania matches of all time. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Number ten, the Triangle Ladder Match from WrestleMania 16 or WrestleMania 2000, whatever you want to go. The Dudleys, Edge and Christian, the Hardys. This started off what went on to be. Maybe the greatest era in tag team wrestling, and actually, you probably say it started the year uh, the, the uh, October before when Edge and Christian and Matt and Hardy had that incredible ladder match that stole the show at No Mercy. Um, and then, and then back in January, the, you know, you know, the Dudleys came in soon after, and they started putting people through tables, and then the Hardys and the Dudleys had a table match at uh, at uh, at uh, Royal Rumble 2000. Uh, which was incredible, and then of course we then we had now the triangle ladder match happening at WrestleMania at WrestleMania 2000, WrestleMania 16, and then that would go on to Edge and Christian starting using chairs in the summer, which of course leads to uh, SummerSlam 2000, the first TLC match, tables, ladders, and chairs match. But this match right here was, I think, incredible. I think I, I you know in my past, uh, in my last one, I I had it. Uh, higher than uh, than I think I should have had it uh, because when you just think about when you think about the TLC and the you know uh, one and the TLC two at WrestleMania the next year WrestleMania seventeen it kind of loses some luster when you look back at it but I still think it is maybe one of the top ten WrestleMania matches of all time and I, I think once I go through all this list and you realize that there's a match that a lot of people love. That is not on this list. You may have a, a right with trying a ladder match being on this list, but hey, what can I tell you? Shit happens. <laughs> I just think that this is one of the best matches of all time, and I think it's number 10. The triangle ladder match, again, from WrestleMania 2000, WrestleMania 16. Number 9, Streak versus Career. Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels, WrestleMania 26. They had one hell of a task to try to live up to WrestleMania 25, the match that stole the show. And boy, did it ever. And it's gone down. And listen, I, I, I'm, there should be no surprise here. Uh, I'm not spoiling anything. That's number one on the list because it's the greatest WrestleMania match of all time. It's the greatest match of all time. So... It, it, of course, it needs to be number one. Um, but the streaking career, like I said, they had a tough time trying to 
you know, live up to that. And they did a damn good job of it. A couple of other spots that was in past, um, uh, uh, that was not in some of the past ones, and then there were some things that they left, you know, happening. Uh, for, you know, they went back to from the last even the resume 25 match. Um, and it was incredible. And of course, it was the Undertaker streak. It was Undertaker streak versus Michael's career. You know, Sean had just, um, you know, he had just won the Slammy, and uh, for, um, you know, the match at WrestleMania 25 in uh, in uh, the past, in prior December, and, he, and so and he talked about you know wanting to you know, have another shot, and Undertaker told him no, and he told him no, not to it wasn't going to be there. So Mike came up with a plan to, you know, win the Royal Rumble, and then so he would choose Undertaker at WrestleMania. You know, who's Undertaker at that time was the World Heavyweight Champion. That did not last. He he lost the Royal Rumble. Remember, Edge made a return and he won that Royal Rumble. Uh, so then, at the Elimination Chamber, he screwed Undertaker out of the title, gave it, and gave it to Chris Jericho, who he he had a a blood feud with. What was it? Was it the prior? Was it, was it the prior? Um, the prior. I don't know if it was that year or the year before, but. So he helped just Jericho win the championship, and he wanted, you know, so he wanted under and he wanted Undertaker so bad, and then so he got the Undertaker, but Undertaker said he wanted his career, and um, of course that would be, you know, the streak of his career, and Shawn Michaels would lose that match and retire from wrestling, and he pretty much has stayed retired up, up until, you know, that unfortunate Crown Jewel match. <laughs> that uh, that they they uh, they had uh, several years back, and as you can say, the same for the Undertaker as well, because he um he probably should have stayed retired as well after the after the, uh, Roman Reigns which beat him. So, but there you have it, the number nine match in the history of WrestleMania, the streak with his career, WrestleMania twenty six, number eight. Icon versus Icon. Hollywood Hulk Hogan versus The Rock. WrestleMania 18. It's in, this is in Toronto. And uh, this, this is a very strange way to do it because, you know, obviously in 2001, we had the invasion and everything like that. And after the invasion was over, the Monday after the invasion, Ric Flair came out and he said he was the one that bought the, the stock from from uh, from Shane and Stephanie so that you know they could fund the uh, the alliance and uh, so then when it was when, when Vince won he came out then he was co part co-owner of the WWE and that led to Vince uh, a match between Vince and Ric Flair at at the uh, I think at, at the Royal Rumble and I think that there might have been a stipulation that if Vince won Ric Flair would have to give it up but Ric Flair won. Uh, he won the match, um, and and then Vince said that he he was going to inject a lethal dose of poison into, you know, the WWE by the NWO, and you know, and that was Hall and Nash and Hogan, and then Ric Flair makes that that incredible video from the you know, and it's you got Kid Rock in it, um, but it's just from the Kid Rock song. Lonely Road of Faith, and it's it's a, it's an incredible video. Um, just yeah, find it on YouTube, watch it back, or check out the Peacock Network. It's on it's on it's on a Monday Night Raw, you know, in January, and you can just you know look, skim through it and look at it. But it's incredible. Um, but anyway, so check NWO boys, and then they make their debut at No Way Out. Um, they you know, you no know, they 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 do it, and then you know they have this big thing. You know where they go ahead and they find, um, they find uh, what's his name, uh, Rock, and Rock makes fun of all three of them, and and so that leads to you know Hogan wanting to know who's better, Rock, you know, he Rock or him, and 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 and, and even on Monday Night Raw, one of the things he did is that they put Rock and they knocked Rock out, and then he took the gun in the ambulance. They stopped the ambulance, and Hogan rams a truck into the ambulance. And so this is this is insane what they're doing, right? 
the disco would be up, but what happens is that Toronto turns Hogan face. And that leads to WWE turning Hogan face. And they even shake hands afterwards. Like, you, you, try, you tried to run the rock over with a, with a semi truck when he was in the, the, um, in the, in the machine, in the, um, what's the name? In, in the ambulance. And then after the match, you're shaking hands and everything like that. It, it's, it's a weird story, but the match is incredible. It, it's just, it is. It's, without question, you know, some people, Say that you know, and I understand it. You know, it's not the most technical match. It's not. It's again, was was one of the matches that is off this list. Um, it's not as technically sound as that one, as that match, right? But the the crowd atmosphere and the way Hogan and Hall, uh, Hogan and Hall, but Hogan and Rock played that played off of that, that that fire from the from the audience and everything like that. And they just knew what they were doing. It it was. It's, it's obviously one of the best things to ever happen on WrestleMania. One of the greatest matches of all time. It's the icon icon match from WrestleMania 18. It's Hogan versus The Rock. Number seven, WrestleMania 12, the Iron Man match, Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels. Some people will call this um, overrated, and they're stupid. This point blank period in the discussion, they're stupid. This is a technical masterpiece. The only thing that is wrong with this match is that Shawn Michaels works Bret Hart's arm for a good, you know, five to you know five to seven minutes in the beginning of the match. And Bret Hart doesn't sell it too much. He doesn't sell it too much after he you know becomes on offense. And uh so it is just but it's a masterpiece of a match. You know there, there, there's no falls, and the first Iron Man match didn't need no falls. You know, it didn't need to have for a fall. It went 60, it went 60 minutes. You know, Guerrero Monsoon, the president, said they had to restart the match, so they restarted the match, and then Sean got his victory. And, of course, you know, this is, I think this is where the, 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 the uh, hatred between Brett and Sean started, because I think Brett, you know, Brett says that Sean, um, told Hebner to tell him to get out of his fucking ring, uh, so that he could have his moment. But I, I, you know, Sean doesn't necessarily remember that. But he, 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 uh, he, he does say that back then he probably he, the guy he was. He surely could have said that. So he doesn't deny it. He just says that he doesn't remember it. So take that for what you will. That being said, going back to the actual match, it's an incredible display of technical ability. It's the, it's a wonderful say of of you know excellence of execution and the high flying abilities of Shawn Michaels. It's so good that I cannot wait. You know, it, it, it you know I just it is I, was, I you know at some point I got to go back and watch that match again. It is absolutely incredible. Number seven from WrestleMania 12. The Iron Man match, Shawn Michaels versus Bret Hart. Number six, from WrestleMania 10, brother versus brother, Bret Hart versus Owen Hart. So, depending on who you believe, either Lex Luger was supposed to be the WWF champion after WrestleMania. Even much so that they filmed they filmed something where he took the title from Yokozuna, ran out and, uh, and 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 posed in the ring with the championship around his waist, so that after WrestleMania they could show that they could show him being you know greeted by the crowd as the WWF champion. Jim Cornette on his podcast said that. But what they did was that they had him steal the belt from Yokozuna. And uh, and then he came out, and, and then what you didn't see in that clip was, you know, he came out and threatened to sue Luger if he didn't take off the title, or if he didn't give it back, or something like that. So, and then he gave it back and everything like that, so like that. But, you know, that was going to be filmed for after Lex won the championship at WrestleMania 10. 
The other school of thought, which um, most people is believe, is that Vince had a hard time choosing who was, who was going to be the champion. Was it going to be Lex Luger or was it going to be Bret Hart? So he concocted the, the scheme at, at the Royal Rumble in 1994 of having, he concocted the scheme of having Bret Hart and Lex Luger go over the top rope both both guys feet hit the floor at the same time and then both being announced the champion so they would do one thing where you know hard finger would come in and say the winner of the 1994 Royal Rumble is Lex Luger and then Lex would and then you know they, they would see the crowd reaction hear the crowd reaction how that felt and then you know it would go back and hard finger would say I was I stand corrected the winner of the 1994 Royal Rumble is Bret Hart and then he would hear that reaction. And Bret Hart gets a lot of reaction than Lex Luger does. Now, the one thing that you have to go back and figure out is that Bret Hart had a bunch of sympathy. You know, he you know in, he had a tag match earlier in the night with, against the Mounties. It was him and Owen. You know, um, him and Owen trying to, to, to win the tag titles. And you know, he Bret Hart hurts his leg. Owen turns on him, and he's he's out there with a bad leg. So he he's got a lot of sympathy. So that could be one of the reasons why the crowd was so hyped for Bret Hart. So Vince hears that and says, "Okay, so we're gonna put the title on Bret." Um, but first, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna have a coin flip to see what happens, and we're gonna have you know, so you know, to see who goes first in the championship match. Lex Luger wins, so he only has to wrestle once. Bret has to wrestle twice. The first match, the opening match, is going to be Bret Hart versus Owen Hart, and it's an absolute classic. And Bret and Owen Hart wins. Owen Hart wins. He shows he was just as good, if not better, than his brother Bret. But of course, Bret Hart comes back later that night and wins the WWE Championship off of Yokozuna, wins it for the second time, and Owen Hart is left standing there at the end of WrestleMania 10. Looking, saying, I can't believe it. What about me? So, but Brett Owen Hart match was so good. Um, <laughs> Owen did a tombstone pile driver in that match, which was insane. Um, and they did, it just had a lot of it's just it's epic. Once again, it's another match I, I've gone back and watched it uh, before, but it's just another match you can watch over and over again. It is incredible. Uh, number six on this list is Bret Hart versus Owen Hart. From WrestleMania 10. Number five. From WrestleMania 13. Austin versus Hart. The submission match. This is how you execute a double turn. Absolutely incredible. Stone Cold comes in as the 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 dirty heel. The man who caused Bret Hart his WWE Championship. A man who uh, you know, who's been, you know, who just won't let this thing go with Bret Hart. And it was just all oh, incredible. And just everything like that. And Bret Hart, the guy who got screwed over time and time again, got screwed at the Royal Rumble from, 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 from Austin. He got screwed on Monday Night, on Monday Night Raw by Austin. He got screwed over by, you know, you know, you know, uh, uh, later on, in, uh, another Monday Night Raw in a in a title match for, you know, in a title rematch against Sid inside the steel cage. I was supposed to keep Austin out. Austin got in there, and screwed him over. And it's just, I think I think that was the that was the go home Raw, the Raw before the WrestleMania match. And uh, you know, afterwards, you know, um, Vince got in and tried to talk to Bret Hart, and Bret Hart pushed Vince down, and he used swear words on the air and. You know, so yeah. We go into that submission match, and it's incredible. And they're just incredible about it. And um, Austin gets some color. He starts bleeding, and because uh, that's because that's what they wanted to do um, on the, on a Stone Cold's podcast. The 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 not the Broken Skull sessions, uh, but on it was just the Stone Cold podcast. When he had Vince on, he talked about that. It was the match 
that you know he said that Brett went to Vince and says I'm I'm down with 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 all I'm, I'm down with this you know with this with this with this, you know, with this finish, but I think it would be better if Austin was was bleeding so that you know it could you know it could make it even better that he started to bleed and and uh, you know and you know and he passes out because he has no he he just whatever and so and during that time they, they were it was a no color policy but he, he trusted he trusted brett to you know to do right there's a you know I, I, there's a school of thought that um brett bladed austin but i don't think that that was the case i think austin bladed himself i think austin bladed himself um and so and and that match is incredible. The finish is is amazing, and then the double turn where where afterwards Bret Hart starts to stomp on a down and bloodied Austin, and and Kim Shamrock has to throw him off to let him know not to do that. Bret Hart turns heel, and then, and then he completes the heel turn on that on the next night on Monday Night Raw when he says, you know, all, you know, all, all his fans all across the world, but the American fans, you can stick it. And so it's just, it's uh, it's incredible. So, uh, yeah, uh, and the match was fantastic too. It's a tremendous art, you know. It is it is probably one of the, it is probably one of the last old school um, brawls that you ever you see. The brawls you see now are done, you know. They're it's a but is it did use a whole bunch of weapons. There was there was one there was two weapons used in this match. It was a it was a steel chair and it was a ring bell. Nowadays all brawls are used you know, it's it's the same old shit. They throw you on tables and they use kendo sticks and they use, and a lot of other things that can be overdone at times. But this one is one of the one of the classics. And it's the WrestleMania 13 submission match between Bret Hart and Steve Austin. It's number five on the list of the greatest WrestleMania matches of all time. Number four, the first televised ladder match in WWE history from WrestleMania 10 as well. Razor Ramon versus Shawn Michaels. So, you know, um... Scott Hall and Ric Flair, they 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 weren't friends. I guess they would never be friends. I don't know if they liked each other or not. I was watching something on the network, The Legend of Wrestling, and you know, Ric Flair had really you know, and, and he said this a bunch of times. He wrote it in, I guess he wrote it in his book that the latter match from WrestleMania 10, um, Shawn Michaels you know, versus Razor Ramon, and it was the match was Shawn Michaels versus the latter. John Michael spent 15 minutes wrestling a ladder, and he, he didn't give Scott Hall credit. But Scott Hall was an important part in this match. He really was. He 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 was just as good as Sean was that night. And it's a tremendous classic. You know, ladder matches that now have evolved, and they it, it's it's multiple ladders. It's two, three ladders at a time. Most ladder matches involved involves multiple people. Uh, we know we now know that it is, it is now evolving to a TLC match. I just read something last night on the internet that the next match, next time they go to Saudi Arabia, is going to be TLC in Saudi Arabia. So we're going to get, you know, we're going to get those matches. We're going to get the chairs match, the ladder match, and then the TLC match. There, but um, what this was was an incredible. It, it was it was amazing to think about the, some of the stuff that they were doing, and like I said, the ladder match has evolved. It's evolved into crazier spots and amazing things, and there are some matches that have just been incredible. But I believe the the original is one of the greatest there is, and. and it's you know I, I did my you no know, I, I I did my top ten ladder matches 
which I think, you know, and as I, and, and so you can go back and check on that, but yeah, this one is incredible. It's the, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to contradict myself because in a couple of one, in a couple of later, you're going to, you know, I'll tell you why, um, but it's incredible. It's Sean versus Razor, the latter match in WrestleMania 10. That's number four on the list. The greatest, greatest WrestleMania matches of all time. Number three, from WrestleMania 21, Shawn Michaels versus Kurt Angle. This was around the times when I wasn't able to watch the pay-per-views um, as often as I was when I was younger. I was, I was, in, I was a lot of places in between a lot of places and just. Didn't have the money, didn't have the ability to do it, yada, yada, yada. But I've gone back in time and watched this, and this match is incredible. The stuff that Kurt Angle and Sean did was amazing. And give them credit. The rematch later on that year at Vengeance was not as, it was, it, it did not live up in my, in, in, in my estimation. You know, to this one, this one is a five-star match. And you now when you think about all of these matches from, from eight, to one, they're all five stars. I think the ten, the triangle ladder match is about four, four and a, is about four and a half. I think the streaking career is about four and a half as well. Um, but from eight to one, they all five star matches, and this one was just incredible. Crude watch. Shawn Michaels was was Mr. WrestleMania, and the stuff they did was absolutely insane. The story they told was amazing. And Sean tapping out to the to the ankle lock was surprising, but they did a great job. And Sean was just he was just he was just God. He this is just the greatest of all time. He really was just the greatest of all time. He's on this he's on this countdown five times: the streak versus career, the Iron Man match, the ladder match between him and Razor, the 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 the, the um, WrestleMania 25, and this one. He's on this match, on this countdown five times. He is the greatest of all time. Without question. Shawn Michaels, Kurt Angle from WrestleMania 21. Truly epic. So here's where I'm gonna get some some maybe some feedback, some 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 pushback from some of you guys. Number two is TLC two from WrestleMania 17. I've called Razor vs. Sean the greatest ladder match of all time. In fact, in my ladder match top 10 list, it's number one. So, why in my WrestleMania matches of all time is TLC number two? Well, I think here's why. It's, it's the. It, when I'm doing my top 10, I did my top 10 ladder matches, I was just talking about. The, the 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 ladder match itself, and what it meant, and I think that the you know the history, be that being the first televised ladder match that that um that was shown on WWE, and the fact that it being being in the first time, being in a five star epic, I think that pushes it ahead of TLC two and all the other ladder matches of being the greatest ladder match of all time. But when you talk about WrestleMania match, I think TLC was was more entertaining. You know, we talked about it. They had the tables, the lights, and chairs. More more furniture happened. There were you know, it's an absolutely incredible match. It, you know, the, you know they talk about this. You know, only one thing being happened. There were no injuries, or anything like that. The only thing that happened is I think Matt hit something the wrong way, and he got a couple stitches. You know, you need and you need a couple stitches after the end of the match, but otherwise this match is incredible and it's 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 so amazing. And then and, it, and then each team of the Dudleys, the 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 Hardys and the Edge and Christian, they have their 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 third come out. You know, Spike Dudley comes out and helps the Dudleys. Rhino comes out and helps the 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 Edge and Christian. And Lita comes out and helps the uh, and helps the Hardys. So it's just. As a, as a match itself, not 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 being that it's a particularly a ladder match, but as a match itself, it's 
insane. And it, I think it is, without a doubt, the greatest, you know, it, it not, it's not the greatest. It is one of the greatest matches in WrestleMania history. The Sean Razor ladder match is the greatest ladder match in, the, in, in wrestling history. But on the greatest match, WrestleMania matches of all time, TLC 2 tops it at number 2. And number 1 is obviously WrestleMania 25, the Heartbreak Kid versus The Undertaker. Listen, it's... it's what else, what else can I say about this? It hasn't been said before. I've called it the greatest wrestling match of all time. As not only to the WrestleMania match of all time. Uh, it's just incredible. This, the, the telling that these two did. We have Undertaker in all black. We have Shawn Michaels in all white. So Shawn Michaels ascends at, at the beginning. He extends from the heavens. And, you know, and then just the history of what the streak meant at that time to Undertaker. And, and to, to to wrestling itself, and then the story, and then the everything like that, and I, I'm almost certain, I'm almost certain that Shawn Michaels was the first to kick out of the of the tombstone. I I I I I, I may be wrong on that, but I'm almost certain. No, Kane was. Yeah, Kane from Kane in WrestleMania 14. He's the first one to kick out of the tombstone. So yeah. But it it was. Incredible, and the look that Undertaker gives when Shawn Michaels kicks out is is incredible, and the back and forth and everything like that, and, and even the the botch, you know, the botch on the dive where you know the cameraman who was being at the time was being played by Sam Snooker was supposed to catch the Undertaker, and he kind of didn't. The Undertaker lands on his kind of lands on his head. So, you know, and everything like that. But even that, it, it just adds to it. Wow. And then Michaels tried to get in the ring. So, and then, you know, and tell Undertaker to count it out. And the crowd says, no, we don't want that. Don't, if you're going to win, don't win that way. And they start to groan and moan. And Undertaker gets in before 10. And it's just how Michael says it. God damn it. It's a masterpiece. It's on YouTube. It's on Peacock. It's on probably every video platform there is. If you have not watched it, what is wrong with you? Go watch it and see the stupendous <laughs> the stupendous match between the heartbreak here, Shawn Michaels, and the dead man, the phenom, the Hall of Famer, the Undertaker from WrestleMania 25. So there you have it, my top 10 WrestleMania matches of all time. Now, there are a couple matches, one in particular, that I know that are not on this list, that some people might ask about, right? The Rock and Austin main event of WrestleMania X-17. Yes, that's an incredible, that's a five-star match. But I don't know if it's one of the greatest WrestleMania matches of all time. Which is incredible, which is, which is insane to think, right? Because I, I got talked about earlier, the triangle ladder match is, um, that is, you know, a five and a half star match. And four and a half star match, not a five and a half star match. I'm not Dave Meltzer. It's, you go to five and that's it. Um, it's a four and a half star match. And so is, um, Uh, so and so is the streak with his career, but the, but but that's a five star match. How so? How is that not on the list? How's the other ones better than that one? I don't know. I think I think because as I talked about with like the the um the, the, the uh, you know the Razor and Shawn ladder match which is TLC two, I think there are you know. I think as a match itself, it just those were more meaningful. The last, or we, we thought the last match of Shawn Michaels. You know, the first ever triangle ladder match between, between you know, two, you know, between three teams that would that, that would revolutionize the tag team division as we know it. Um, that's, I think that's probably more important than, you know, the Austin match. Even the Austin turned heel. 
uh, it's probably more important than that. And then, of course, uh, people were, were, many, many people th think, think, and um, or at least maybe thought, was the greatest match of all time up until um, China Taker came out was Savage Steamboat for WrestleMania three, and it's it's. You know, I, I, it's, you know, it's good. It was meticulously laid out by Savage, and that was something that Randy Savage was known for, for laying out his matches, particular spot by spot, this and that. Um, but I think it, this was just in, it was fantastic. You know, it, it truly was, and it was, it, and for its day, it is. Uh, it's it, it, it was really good and but I think as you do look back at it and you look at some of the matches that, that have come after it I don't want to say that it loses its luster or anything like that but I do think you can look at it and say yes it's it's this no longer the greatest match of all time and there are Definitely other matches that have that are surpassed. Now, 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 maybe, maybe, now in my past, um, in my last list I did that I'm redoing from, um, it was on the list. It was there was it was number ten on the list of the greatest match, matches of all time. And now this one is not even on the list. So, um, some people may have a problem with that, and I understand. But I just feel that my ten. That I have on the on the list are the ten greatest WrestleMania matches of all time. So please, if you have any disagreements, post your comments down below and tell me what you guys think. Give me your list. If if you if you if you've got a video about this, link it down there in the comment section. I'll go watch it. Anybody, all the other people can go watch it as well. So please let me know down in the comments section what you feel of the top ten matches of all time. How do you like my list? Thank you guys so much for watching. This is your boy AJ Tripp signing off. Make sure that once again, Friday, you you know check out That's a Shoot. Um, I will have my NXT Standard of Delivery and WrestleMania predictions. And then on Saturday, April 2nd, after NXT Standard and Deliver, a rebel reaction. And then after WrestleMania Saturday, a rebel reaction to that. And then after Sunday's WrestleMania, a rebel reaction to that. And again, I don't know just yet, but we may even have something for the post draw after Mania, depending on what happens on Saturday and Sunday. But you're going to make sure you're going to be here. So click the notification bell so that when I put out a video, when I go live, whatever, you will get the notification. You can come and join and we can talk about it as well. As always, be good to each other, y'all. Be careful out there. And I am out. Happy WrestleMania week.